The Truth, told by Monique Noel Gunter. Episode 1, Infinite Banking. All right, so as promised, Monique Noel Gunter is going to tell you the truth. Okay, what is infinite banking? Have any of you wondered what it is and why it's so popular? So I'm going to tell you the truth. If you are an insurance company, right, who is your primary demographic? It's usually somebody who's got kids, someone who's got a house, someone who's got a business, someone who has assets that they need to insure so that they know that they're a security if, God forbid, something goes wrong, right? Insurance, by definition, is um, something that's going to protect you. It's a guaranteed protection. You pay a premium every month or annually or quarterly, whatever your arrangement is, and that purchased insurance guarantees that if god forbid this happens that will be what you get based on your agreement insurance is something you have to qualify for it's not something you can just go to the store and buy right that's insurance infinite banking how does it come into play and what does this have to do with insurance so infinite banking is a concept it's basically a concept that says okay you are now going to be able to ensure that your money grows and you can borrow from your money you want the truth i'm going to tell you the truth whole truth and nothing but the truth insurance companies needed a way to reach a demographic before infinite banking was not accessible who is this demographic this is the younger demographic the 18 to 35 no kids no house you know younger generation how can we reach this demographic right they're not the target audience introduce infinite banking infinite banking promises hey you can become your own bank now you know you don't need to go qualify for a loan now you can be your own bank all of a sudden you've got 20s and 30s and 40s that would not have previously been interested in insurance signing up for a whole life insurance plan now whole life insurance is different from a term life insurance because whole life insurance accumulates a cash value it's built in to the whole life policy so you pay essentially a premium for your whole life they'll give you um a plan based on what you qualify for and you pay that premium it's supposed to keep you covered for your whole life there are caveats though caveats being that as you get older you become more expensive to insure so if you're paying the same premium What's going to happen as your cost goes up? Eventually, your premium is going to be less than what is required to keep you covered, right? At some point, you're going to have to pay a higher premium. We're not going to get into that right now, but that is whole life in a nutshell. Term life is on uh, insurance for a specific term. It only covers you from A to B. It's like when you buy a car insurance, it covers you from this time duration to that time duration. At the end of that duration, you can reapply for insurance and see what you qualify for. Term life insurance is similar, but not created equally. Back to infinite banking. How does it work? All right, so now with infinite banking, you are going to make an investment. Your investment is going to give you a plan, a holistic plan that gives you insurance, right? And cash accumulation. Now, what they tell you is that with this particular infinite banking, I'm going to call it product, you're allowed now to take your money out as many times as you want, tax-free, and you can put it back or not put it back. It's your money. You can do what you want with it, right? That's what they tell you. The catch. When you buy insurance, it takes time. Usually with whole life, it's three to five years. So I'm going to show you my little hand right here. Three to five years before you can actually have a profit, right? Now, that profit is going to be your cash value. Right, so three to five years typically is how long it takes before the money that you've been paying every month will accumulate and then you'll have something in there as a cash value. Now the cash value, that profit, your cash profit is what you're gonna be using as your bank. Essentially, you're funding your own bank and you're able to take from that bank. Now I have a question for you. My dog apparently has a question too. Okay, so my question. If you were to take your money and put it in the bank, right? Let's say you put $100 away every single month for a year. At the end of that year, you would expect that your money is still there. $100 times 12 months, you're expecting $1,200 to be in that bank account, right? So based on that simple $100 a month amount, you'd say $1,200. Let's 
look here, $1,200 being $100 invested for a year, right? Multiply that times three, that's 3,600, right? Multiply that out again, times five, we're looking at six grand. So 3,600 to $6,000 is what you would expect if you had your money in the bank, right? For a year, every single year for three to five years. So would you assume then that your profit in this cash accumulation account will be 3,600 to $6,000 after three to five years? It depends on the policy. It depends on how it's written. It depends on the terms of your contract. So wouldn't it then be better just put your money in the bank? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Why is that? There's a word called inflation. Inflation basically is going to make things more expensive over time. So if you think back to the cost of a gallon of milk when you were a kid, it's a lot less than what that cost of a gallon of milk is today, right? Now, the thing with inflation is as the prices go up, they don't necessarily have to come down. Supply and demand kind of play a factor in here. But inflation makes your money lose its value over time. So if you were to take that same $1,200 and put it in the bank for the next three to five years, if inflation changes, the value of your money is also going to change. All right. So I hope this is making sense, guys. Now I'm going to erase all of this. Oh, no, I'm just leaving it for now. And I'm going to explain to you something called risk. Risk. Risk is anything that is not guaranteed. If there's a chance you can lose money, there's risk involved. If there's a guarantee, that's insurance. So anytime your money is going to be at risk, you essentially could lose your money. You could lose what you've invested. You could lose potential gain. It's a lot of risk involved, right? But why not just put my money in the bank where it's safe? Here's the thing with banks. Banks are in the business of making money. If you were to put $1,200 in the bank, you're expecting that $1,200 is there for you when you're ready. But the bank is not just gonna leave the money there. They're gonna take it and put it in the market or lend it out to other people so that they could make a profit, interest, gain, whatever it is, off of that money. That's how banks stay afloat. You essentially thinking that you're gonna become your own bank by signing up for infinite banking are not exactly getting what you are intending to get. And I say this because it's true. If you wanted to be your own bank, you would have something that you can invest for yourself that you have control over. But for the first three to five years, the insurance company is not gonna allow you to touch your money. It's not even considered your money. And anything that you accumulate in cash value upon death does not go to your family. It goes back to the insurance company. So if you happen to save, let's say you do infinite banking and you open a whole life policy and you amass like 60 grand, just a number, right, in money, in your cash value, when you die, that cash value of 60,000 goes back to the insurance company. If you happen to borrow any of that money and you didn't pay it back, that amount that you borrowed will be deducted from your face value. So if you had $100,000 in coverage, for example, and you had a cash accumulation of 60, but you borrowed 50 because you wanted to do something, $50,000 at your death would then be deducted from the $100,000 that you had in insurance so that it would offset. I hope this is making sense to you. This is one of the primary reasons why I tell people you've got to be careful what you sign up for. Make sure you fully understand it before you get involved. There's something called the rule of 72. What is this rule of 72? And I know this video is about almost 10 minutes long, so I'm going to wrap it up short. But the rule of 72 says any number of interest, right? Let's say 10%, 5%, whatever it is. Whatever your interest rate is, if you divide it into the number 72, it'll tell you about how long it'll take for your money to double, right? 72. Let's say using current interest rate. Current interest right now, um, I don't know. Let's say it's at six, six percent, right? You go in here, one, you got a one. <laughs> Wait, no, what did I just do? Six and one and two. So now we're gonna say you have approximately 12 years before your money doubles, right? That's at a 6%. Now, what if you're thinking about inflation on top of that? If you follow the same rule of 72 and you're doing the inflation rate of let's say six, it's the same thing, 12 years for your money to double. Why am I showing you this, right? The rule of 72 is telling you how long your money is going to take to double. If you invest your $1,200 into the bank, or not into the bank, but into 
um, some place where you're going to get 6% interest, it'll take you about 12 years for your money to double. Following that concept, 12 years for your money to double, you should expect that if you're investing $100 a month after 12 years, you should have double what you've invested based on a 6% rate and assuming steady inflation and a whole bunch of other things. But so just bear bear with me, follow the line, don't quote me on um, inflation rates. I don't know, they change, they fluctuate. There's always risk involved, right? But just follow the concept. Theoretically, if you have followed the rule of 72 using a 6% rate, you know that you have about 12 years for your money to double, right? That's using the 6%. Why go through all of this? right putting aside your money religiously for three to five years to not be able to touch it and then you know that that profit is going to be less than what you would have accumulated if you just put your money in the bank which would be negatively affected by inflation why not actually be your own bank have your insurance policy to cover you your insurance is never meant to cover you for your whole life it's meant to cover you for a term while your assets grow Wow, the things that you're investing, excuse me. Okay, so it's meant to cover you for that specific term. While your assets are growing, you are now protected. So God forbid something happens to you, you now have insurance and you have assets that are growing and maturing. This gives you time to let your assets work, right? The market does what it does. If it'll take you 12 years for your money to double and you invested a good chunk of change, congratulations, now your money has time to work. So when the market goes up and down, you're not going to panic and try and sell or buy and you know cause harm to your account because you're in it for the long haul. You're in it with patience, knowing that you're protected. God forbid your life is taken sooner than you expected. Now your family is covered. They don't have to make a GoFundMe page for you because your insurance should cover your expenses. I always tell people buy term, it'll cost you less long run, in the long run if you qualify for it, and then invest the difference, what you save, right? So now let's say we look at this same example, we take $100. If you take $100, right? And then let's say you split it. Let's do like maybe a 50-50, just for giggles, right? If you buy 50% of it for insurance, and then 50% of it for investments. Now you're gonna have your money working in two ways. This, your investment pot, is yours, right? As your money grows, it is yours. When you, depending on what you do with it, what account you have, there are different things. We can have you set up a meeting to speak with someone specifically about that. But your investments are a different pot entirely. They grow, this is your money. You don't have to borrow from it. This is your insurance. Your insurance covers you for the duration. In New York, I think you can go up to 30 years. In most other states, or many other states, I should say, you can go up to 35 years. If, let's say, you have coverage now for the next 30 to 35 years, your in your investments are going to have that much time to grow, right? Really, it's up to you what you do with your investments. But let's say you leave your investments in there for the next 30 to 35 years. That money is going to grow and it's gonna follow that rule of 72. Now you follow the rule of 72, you've given yourself time and you've protected your assets. The minute now your insurance, let's say you had 100K in insurance, right? Your insurance is that. Once your investments cross 100K, now you have a decision to make. Now you are self-insured. Essentially, you can take the money out of your insurance and put it towards your investments because now you're self-insured. You have the coverage that you would have paid the insurance company to do for you. Or you can leave your insurance in place in case, God forbid, anything happens and also because you have perks with those insurances. And then you can say, okay, well, I, I'm going to keep growing my assets. Now look, when you have your assets, you can take from this money. It's your money. Whatever you take from this is not deducted from that. So if you die, your family gets what you had on your insurance plan and what you have accumulated in your cash accumulation account. One of the things that made me make this video is because I'm seeing so much, so much out there about infinite banking. I actually had um, a partner who joined with me because he was like, I'm gonna change my family's life. I'm gonna do all these different things. And he was planning to do it with infinite banking. But then when I sat down and I explained to him how infinite banking's concept really works versus how what I just showed you really works, <coughs> excuse me, he realized he would have been, you know, 
at a loss for the first three to five years he's got nothing and then everything that he accumulates goes right back to the insurance company not to him or his family or his estate what's gonna happen to that money right it's not his it breaks my heart to think that some people are actually taking their annuity and taking their whole annuity and putting it into a whole life policy the minute you do that all of that money that was once yours is now full and owned by that whole life company so you have to borrow against it you have to borrow it if you don't put it back and some of the, some of them will tell you okay oh, well, you don't have to put it back because whatever the case is based on the terms and conditions of that particular contract great but it's still not your money think for a second people if the whole reason why infinite banking was created was to reach a demographic that previously was not interested in insurance then it stands to reason that that demographic needs to really be educated while they're going in there to make sure that they're protected. I prefer an informed consumer hands down because if you ask me questions and you put me on the spot and you are having a conversation because you want to understand something, once you make the connections and you understand fully, you can decide what it is that you prefer to do. Life is short, life is sweet, live it well. But be informed. Take the time to ask the questions. Um, big sister to so many people around me and in my community, I feel like it is important to be able to have an honest voice that you can trust. So I've taken it upon myself to make this series just answering questions that have been asked that I'm not seeing online answers for that are true or are whole truths. Because a lot of partial truths are everywhere and partial truths they're not the whole truth. They're not the truth. They're, they're essentially lies. So I rest my head down on the pillow at night. I go to sleep, no problems. Why? Because my conscience is clean. I know I'm doing right by my clients. I know I'm doing right by the choices that I'm making. And we're all human. We all make mistakes. You know, we learn to learn sometimes and sometimes we learn from others' mistakes. So if you've watched this video this far and this information has been helpful to you, please tell me. You know, feedback is always great. Share it with somebody who you think can benefit from it. And if you have questions or concerns or maybe you outright disagree with everything that I'm saying, tell me. I'd love to have a conversation with you because what I've learned is that misconceptions and misunderstandings can easily and not easily, but often <laughs> be smoothed out with conversation. I'm easy to talk with. And if you have questions, please post them here or contact me directly. I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. Monique Noel Gunter, Telling the Truth. The Truth by Monique Noel Gunter. Have a great day. Get the truth. Post your questions and comments here or text them to 914-619-7537. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.